Hello. I'm pleased to welcome you to the first lesson dedicated to the basics of working and setting up the interface for comfortable interaction with NanoCAD tools. We will spend most of the course studying and working with commands located on the 3D Tools tab. This tab becomes available when the 3D modeling module is present. You can display or hide a required tab in the ribbon interface by right-clicking on the tabs and selecting the desired ones in the drop-down menu show tabs. Also, for effective work with 3D objects, I recommend displaying the 3D history. We can do this by going to the Manage tab and clicking on the corresponding icon in the Functional Panels field, after which the 3D history will appear in the list on the left. In this window, the sequence of actions and operations carried out by us with the 3D model will be displayed. Here is also located the GCS folder, which contains the origin point, standard axis, and planes. For convenience, I move the properties window to the right side of the workspace. This can be done by simply dragging. If the size of the graphics window is critical to you, then you can leave the properties on the left. In this sense, there is no universal solution. It all depends on your preferences. Simplifying or even eliminating movement between command panel tabs will help interface customization. In the Manage tab, we expand the menu under the Interface icon and choose Toolbars. A window opens in which we can choose which tools to bring out for quick access. For example, I often need to apply fillets, so I will find the Constraints toolbar in the list and mark it with a check. As we see, it appeared at the top of the screen. I'll increase the size of the icons for convenience and close the toolbar. After placement, this panel can be moved to a position that is convenient for you. A few words about navigation. Navigation in 3D space differs from 2D. Let's open the cube example. Turn off selection preview. Set it to never. In 2D, we moved within the sheet space by holding the middle mouse button. With the addition of another axis for rotating the image, we use the combination of the shift key and the middle mouse button. Rotation occurs around the point that the mouse cursor is pointing to at the start of the rotation. This point is marked with a light blue icon. If the cursor points to empty space, the rotation will occur around the geometric center of the part or assembly. This can also happen if we get lost in the 3D model space, lose our part, or want to return to a specific view. We can use the navigation locator in the upper right corner, as well as the drop-down list of views, or a quick method by double-clicking the middle mouse button. This action will automatically return the camera to our part. If the locator or view control is in your way, you can disable them by clicking on the plus sign and selecting the necessary options. For example, let's remove the locator and view controls. But since I need all this, I'll bring them back. Next to the list of views is the 3D model display menu. In it, we choose how the program will display 3D objects. Most views will be useful to us in one way or another during our work. Now let's move to the commands in the 3D Tools tab. At the very beginning, there is a Modeling Modes group, responsible for different ways of creating 3D objects. Depending on the selected mode, the commands to the right in the ribbon change. For each mode, the most useful functions are selected by default, but you can customize the ribbon if needed. With this, our first introductory lesson comes to an end. In the following lessons, we will thoroughly review each of the modeling modes. Thank you for your attention.